Thank you uh, for being here this morning. We're glad that you're here, and uh, we have an exciting time set for you. Pastor Alex and I are going to uh, team teach, and I'm looking over my shoulder for a bucket of water, um, because at this point... (laughs) At this point, he should already be out here. So I was just like, oh, they're going to pull a prank on me. But um, we're going to talk this morning, obviously, about being thankful. Um, but I need to, we need to have a little discussion, and it'll actually work out better that he's not in the room, because um, you'll see why in a minute. Uh, how many of you guys are listening to Christmas music already? Okay, I, I, I'm actually going to need a show of hands, because this is going to come into play later. How many of you guys are listening to Christmas music either now or all year round? Doesn't matter. Like you've already started. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, good. That's a little less percentage wise than it was in the first service. I was a little overwhelmed um, in the first service, but uh, I, I have I have a take. I think that um, you shouldn't have to qualify when you listen to Christmas music. It should not be pegged in the month of December. Um, and so I I like put a Christmas music on, like in July, I'll, r- I'll run it up, you know, because we're halfway there, or something like that, um, and I'll, I'll listen to a little bit of that, like, you know, in moderation, we don't just get silly around here, right, we're just going to do it a little bit, but I know some people have really strong opinions um, about the holidays, and, and, and when, we, when we do Christmas music and all that stuff, um, but holidays can be a stressful time of the year for some people, um, some of you... Welcome. Holidays can be a stressful time. Some of your guys' family may look like this. Deanna, would you show them this picture because it's so nice and cute? Uh, Some of your families probably look like that, you know. Beautiful table with food and happiness and joy. Um, And then some of your families may look like this. Um, And that's true. That happened. So I took a little, I jumped ahead, took a little poll for you, and you're going to be happy to know that they're definitely on your side this morning on the Christmas music. Yeah. Christmas music after Thanksgiving? No, yeah, they're after. After. Yeah. Praise him. Praise him. This is so good. Because first service had me a little worried. I was like, you know what? You can't everybody listen to Christmas music this early, right? Um, you can. No, you can't. I mean, you can, but you're going to go crazy, right? No, you're I not. I used to work at Target, all right? I worked at Target, and I know how many Christmas songs I listened to through November and December. Lost my mind. Okay. That's a good thing. That's no, a real good no, thing. Not, I love Jesus. But. No, I know that. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do now is we're going to ask all of you guys that don't listen to Christmas music either year round or you wait until after Thanksgiving to just come forward for prayer. I know it's a bold step. Okay, but somebody's got to do it. All right, and I want I want and Pastor Alex he's gonna lead the charge. I'm gonna pray over him right now because I know for sure that it's okay to listen to Christmas music whenever I feel like it. It is, but I just. Listen to the people. No, no. All right. So we did a study. I, I went this week and I did a study. All right. So it's bad for your health, number one. All right. And I want to give you guys uh, practical things that will improve your health. Right. This is not just a seminar. It's not a TED talk. All right. This is like church. So we're going to give you stuff that's good for your soul. All right. So um, according to Linda Blair, she's a clinical psychologist in the United Kingdom. Right. Um, the United using Kingdom. Up all that cheer too early may trigger holiday season mental health. Um, and feelings of stress, all right? I don't want to stress you guys out, all right? Stress less. Stress less. I'll put the bumper sticker on the car, all right? So don't look at me like that. It's interesting because I did a a study, and in Psychology Journal, it says that when you listen to Christmas music, you actually have feelings of joy and and you stress less. Well, actually, I'm going to take it a step further. I actually know I'm right. And this is why. I'm just going to no. set that right there for a minute. You just see, because I know I'm right and you're wrong, and that's fine. Okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> all right. So, uh, brings me to the next point. Incessant repetition of holiday music can have a psychological impact on your life. Right. No, no, no. Okay. So, holiday music is uplifting, right? It's joyful, right? We, yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Amazing. Jesus comes to earth, right? Yeah. It's amazing, okay? Um, but after a certain period of time, you start to, like, hear the same Mariah Carey song over and over and over again, and it starts to become boring. I love Mariah Carey Christmas music, all right? But um, then that brings on stress of, like, hey, I got I to gotta get the lights on my house. I got to get the Christmas tree up. So I'm going to put my steak down, and 
I don't want to cause you people stress. So listen, that's why you shouldn't listen, I already to took a poll and I look. We do everything. You did a poll without me conveniently. Uh, yes, conveniently without you conveniently. Oh no, I did a poll. And the results of the poll overwhelmingly, whether you guys admit it or not, overwhelmingly show that Christmas music can be played whenever we want it to be played. So there. All right, all right, hear me out, hear me out, all right? You don't skip Mother's Day for Memorial Day, all right? So why are we skipping Thanksgiving? There's Thanksgiving music out there, people, all right? We gobble, eat, gobble we, by Matthew West. We on. eat dinner every day. We eat dinner every day. Right, but if you're going to a basketball game, you don't wear your we jersey. We eat dinner and, oh, every oh, day. We go to the one game, so I'm going to put my steak down. And you know what? We eat, eat dinner every Jesus day. in your life. We need more Jesus in your life. Listen, That's listen, Grinch, listen. Okay, Scrooge. let's get rid of Jingle Bells and all that stuff. What's the core of Christmas music? What is the core of Christmas music? Well, it depends on who you're talking to, right? No, it I'm asking yes. you. I'm you're asking, asking you. It's I'm asking Jesus. you. We know, we know. Okay, it's, it's about, about Jesus. So okay. why in the world would we not want to sing songs and listen to songs that are about Jesus all year round? But they're not about Jesus. They're not, though. It's westernized Christianity, all right, that tells you, you know, it's about snow, Frosty the Snowman. And jingle bells, and decorating, <laughs> and and Santa kissing Mama in the room or something. You need to right? stop right now. <laughs> right? It's scandalous music. You need to stop music. right don't, now. Don't come. You, you need to you stop right correct. now. You all need right? to stop right now. No. no, you're hurting my feelings. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't know this was all about you today, though. Oh. I didn't know this was all about Pastor Trab today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's about what he wants, right? Anybody else wondering what in the world we're doing up here? The westernized Christianity is really good. That's right. fresh. <laughs> <laughs> that was legit. I did some research on my own, and I found out that blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, this is what happens, right? We think that we're right, and we put our statement in the right spot. And I build a wall, and I stand on this side of that, and I hurl things on the other side of the wall, just, you know, and see if I can hit something. Meanwhile, Pastor Alex is over there arguing his side of the case, and he probably feels like he's right, too. But ultimately, what happens <laughs> is we have... You're not right. I am. Ultimately, okay. what happens is we have this in between us now. Starts as Christmas music, then it gets personal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on, somebody. We've all started arguing about sports or about how the turkey was cooked, or something, and then we're name-calling and bringing up stuff from 10 years ago. Don't, don't, don't act like I haven't been to your Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right? Don't act like I haven't been around your family drama. I know that's how it works, okay? And sometimes, we're not making, we're not making light of it, but uh, sometimes this is what happens during this next season of holidays. We anticipate that we're going to spend time with family members, or friends, or even coworkers, or whatever, and we just, we know we're right, and so we just build this wall. Ultimately, what happens is, I, it goes so far that I lose all contact, or ability even, to communicate with him, right? And Over Christmas stuff music. that's like, hey, this is, I know I'm right on this, right? I mean, it's stuff like, um, like my stance on the Bible, right? It's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to stand for this because I know this is right. This is how I was raised. You know, I go to church every Sunday. I know this is the truth, right? But the, the way we come across sometimes is, is like, I don't care what you say. Like, I'm right and you're wrong. You guys ever been there with me? Yeah. It's exactly the what you're saying. Thing, right? That attitude is the important part. Right? Because we can be right. And there's often times in your family arguments or when you're talking to coworkers or whatever, especially when it comes to the word, that you, you, you are right. Okay? We understand that the Bible is true. That's what we believe here. There's nothing wrong with holding that belief. We're not asking anybody to water that down or say like, yeah. well, you know, maybe Jesus, you know. No, we're, we're holding the truth of that. But in the attitude and the manner of which it doesn't deconstruct a friendship, it doesn't hurt something and doesn't put a wall up because even if we are right sometimes the way we approach it without peace without gratitude without these other things all of a sudden i can't communicate to my friend my brother yeah. because i've allowed myself to get so caught up hear me now i've allowed myself to get so caught up in being right that I forgot how to love my neighbor as myself. Love my family as myself. Love, love, fill in the blank. 
right? This is like totally easier said than done, right? You're like, you know, in the moment, or like, oh, I'm at church, yeah, I can do this, but the moment you're in it and crazy grandma's going off on what she wants to go off on, right? You're like, I don't know if I can love crazy grandma tonight, right? <laughs> but I, like, and this is not even like, we're not trying to come down on you guys. We're just trying to give you some encouragement this year that, hey, like, we're even working on some of this stuff. Like, we're not above, you know, this message that God's put on our heart. Yeah, and it's, and, and I think we just want to make it very clear that we're not asking you to compromise when we talk about this stuff in the next couple of minutes. We're not saying you should water down the gospel or, or compromise the truth of the word. It's none of that. Um, but there is clear instruction on what it's like to follow Jesus. And we just saw people in the first service and people in the second service that marked themselves, right? That, that they said, I want to follow Jesus in baptism. And that's your public confession of faith. That's yeah. an internal transformation of, and that's your public confession, right? And so you're saying, I am different, right? And trust me, everybody in our culture wants to be different, but hear me out for a minute. This is, the, this is the type of thing when you see in Scripture, when people follow the Lord in water baptism, when the disciples came and walked with Jesus, when the New Testament church was growing and building, they were preaching the word, people were saying, well, these guys are different. They said it about Jesus himself. So this guy talks differently than everybody else. This, guy's, this, this, this isn't the same thing. And so it's, it's kind of like, uh, I'd like you to share what you shared before, yeah. but it's, there's a difference between just knowing who Jesus is and, and saying hoorah. Yep. And actually following him. Yeah, so we can find ourselves today in, in a couple categories. Uh, we can find ourselves being a fan or being a follower. And uh, a fan knows how to celebrate. A fan knows how to, like, cheer when times are good. But a follower will know when to surrender, right? You guys ever been there where it's like God's asking me to do this one thing, and I don't want to do it because I don't really like that person, right? <laughs> um, but maybe God is asking us for an opportunity this year to, to take that baby step, to, to like try something new this year. If you've never surrendered or you've never asked God to, to take a part of your life that you're like, nobody knows about, nobody wants to touch. Um, like maybe God's going to use that this year to like bring your families closer together. And I think that's, that's a huge win, right? Yeah. It's in Matthew uh, chapter six, when Jesus is talking, giving the greatest sermon ever preached and the sermon on the mountain, he says, blessed or blessed, however you want to say it, are the peacemakers. Mm. Peacemakers. So this isn't a negative or an either or, but I want you to see the difference in this. A peacekeeper is somebody that avoids conflict. They just try and keep the house okay. They try and keep everybody safe and let's not have anything happen. A peacemaker, watch this, is somebody that says, I don't think that's that important and I don't want it to get in the way of our relationship. That's what a peacemaker does. They go into the conflict and they say, hey, we're gonna, we need to resolve this. Does it mean that you're always going to agree with somebody? Or that you're always going to come to some, like, oh, wow, I won you over in the Christmas argument. No, because it'll never happen. <laughs> right? Because you're wrong. But the peacemaker says, I understand there's conflict here. And I am willing, like Pastor Alex was saying, I am willing to figure out a way to love you and see you the, the way God sees you. Come on. Think yeah. about it. And I'm willing to say, you know what, I want to I be a peacemaker, which involves action steps, right? And the cool part is as he's breaking that down, like that person who disagrees with you, I see what he's doing there. And I may never do this, I may never take this down, but I see he's making the first step, right? And I think that's, that's the first part is like, hey, like, will you, like, sometimes it's like, are you going to humble yourself and, and admit when you're wrong? You know, you say you, you're a follower of Jesus, right? So... Like, how are you, how are you showing me love in this moment? And I think the more we do that is the more times that these walls will get broken down. Yeah. And like Alex said before, we're not, we're not sure, like staying on the surface level. I understand there's deep hurts. Okay. Yeah. I understand that, that people in your family, maybe, or friends of your family have done things that injured you or other people emotionally, physically, right? I, we understand all that. And we're not asking you to compromise and just say, well, I let, you know, everything's fine now. But we know that when, when we read the word, we know that Jesus is asking us, he's commanding us, actually, we're going to get to that in a minute, yeah. to act and be a certain way towards our brothers and sisters, towards those around us. Does it mean that, does it, like you said, does it mean that their wall, that they're going to come to the agreement and ask for forgiveness and everything goes back to, you know, hunky-dory? I don't even know where that came from. Hunky-dory. Hunky-dory. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Maybe. if they never take the wall down? What if God is asking you to love people that will never 
like meet you halfway. Are we still gonna love them? Like, are yeah. we still gonna be like, you know what, I'm gonna love you when you're, you know, yeah. you're making me so mad today, right? Yeah. Um, so if you guys wanna open your Bibles to Colossians 3, and we'll be in verse uh, 15 through 17. And if you don't have your Bible, we're gonna throw it up here on the screen. Um, it says, let the word, of, or, yeah, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which you were indeed called in one body and be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing praises and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This, uh, on the screen, we put the Passion Translation up, which is a different lens to it. Um, and it says, let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one. Let your heart be always guided. So we, we knew that the, the authors of scripture, they, they came to believe that the heart was the central piece. Like we know that our brain is the thing that makes our body go now because we've learned that, right? But they, they used to think that the heart, well, that's why we hear so much about it. The heart was the central piece. That was the soul, right, of the person, yeah. right? And so it's saying at your very, at your very core, let your heart be guided by the peace of the anointed one. See, we get so caught up in cooking the turkey and getting things right, or I got to go to this Thanksgiving and then this one, and we got to do this for Christmas and all that, that, that sometimes we don't take a minute, and this is what we're hoping here that happens this morning before you walk out. We don't take a minute to just go, wait, God, I need to be thankful. I need to understand what you've done for me. The end of that verse says, because of what Christ has done for you. Because of what Christ has done for you. I think it's important. Wow. Wow. Amen, brother. <laughs> there goes a light. <laughs> we did that in the first service, but it was over here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Special effects team, you know. Um, but what, what we come to understand, though, is that what Christ has done for us is the basis of our thanksgiving. It's, it's the basis of our peace. It's the base, yeah. basis of our gratitude. Because you may be wondering, like, well, how am I going to get into this? How am I going to go into these potential conflicts? Or how am I going to deal with these people that I work with? Or how am I going to deal with these friends of mine that, that are just, they're just so, they make me mad, and they're not, they don't listen to God's word, and they don't do all of this stuff. And we want to hit the pause button and say, wait a minute, let's go back to the very beginning. And it's because of what Christ has done for us that we can have peace and gratitude. Yeah, it's kind of like that story we read about in the Bible uh, where Jesus heals these 10 lepers. And uh, it's, it's cool because I didn't even know they were talking about that in kids' church today. So it's like it kind of ties that in. Um, but Jesus heals these 10 lepers, these guys who are sick, um, and only one comes back to thank Jesus for, for doing that. Um, and so I think about, like, why didn't the nine come back to thank Jesus, right? So I have, I have a theory or some, some reasons why these guys might not have come back. Um, one wanted to wait and see if the cure was real. Uh, one wanted to see if it would last. Another would say, oh, I'll see Jesus later. I'll thank him then. Um, one decided that he never had leprosy. One said, well, I would have gotten well anyway. Uh, one gave glory to the priest who Jesus told them to go and see. Uh, one said, oh, well, Jesus didn't really do anything. Uh, any rabbi could have done it, and I was already much improved. And so we have reasons in our life um, to be thankful for what Jesus did, right? Like, I challenge our students this week at our Thanksgiving party, like, what do you have to be thankful for? Like, something as simple, and we forget about it a lot of times, we have breath in our lungs. Like, we have hands and, and a body that works. Like, we have clothes on our back, we have a house, we have food on our table. Like, we have a job. Like, in, in the economy that we live in, we have jobs. Like, find something that you can be thankful for and be that one that came back to Jesus. Yeah, and I love, the, I love what you said about breath in your lungs because it brings it back to that core of, you know, what, what happens when things are not well? You know, it's easy, it's easy to look and, and count our many blessings, right? And when things are going good, it's, it's, oh, it's easy to stack those up. It's much harder when you're walking through a time. It's much harder when, when you're maybe experiencing homelessness. It's much harder when you're in the middle of an addiction. It's much harder when you're in the middle of just being lost and away from your family. 
It's much harder to think about the things that we're grateful for or to have that kind of peace. And that's where we need to be as believers, those ones that are marked that are different. We need to come yeah. back to that very beginning and go, wait a minute. Because God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us, he lived a life that we could never live. He was perfect and sinless in every way. And then he died a death that we couldn't, I couldn't handle. I know that for sure. And he paid a price that I know I couldn't have paid. And all of that for me and you. And we just sang it earlier. We just sang that chorus that said, if the cross, the cross is enough. If that's all we got, Pastor Alex, was the cross and the salvation and a chance to be with him forever and eternity, we have an, a reason yeah. to have an attitude that is thankful, that has full of gratitude yeah. for what Christ has done for us. Yeah. I, I would love to be uh, in a place, and, and like I, I, I said this earlier to you, but I can lean on the negative right? Anybody with me? I want to out yourself out right now. Like, I'm mostly positive. I like to smile. I like to have fun. But I can lean on the negative, and I can let that kind of drive the boat sometimes, you know? And I, and I sometimes, when things aren't going exactly how I think they should go, my attitude doesn't follow, right? I'm not proud of that. I'm just saying that's where we can grow as people. We can say, hey, listen, go all the way back. Wait a minute, but Jesus died for my sins, Jesus gave me an opportunity to be in heaven with him forever when I accept him. And so we, we get so caught up sometimes that we, that we miss those things. And we need right. to be like the leper, the one leper that yeah. came back and the nine that left. To, who knows what their deal is? Yeah. And, and the cool part is like, or I guess it's more of a challenge is we haven't experienced it if we don't display it. Like, it doesn't matter how much head theology you know, how many yeah. books you read, how, what your status is at your job. Like, if we don't love people... Um, who are going through tough times or even people that are hard to love, like we haven't really experienced God's love for us, right? You guys with me? It's like sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow because I'm like, like, man, I think, I think I do okay, but then, you know, not very nice to crazy grandma at holiday times, right? Yeah. Or I'm not nice to that uncle that comes and he's had a rough, rough go at life, right? Yeah. And so we, we want to leave you with some practical steps um, because it's like Alex just said, it's fun, one thing to talk about, it's another thing to do it. Yeah. Um, and so we have, we have this verse in First Thessalonians chapter 5, and it, it makes it super simple. Um, you remember those books like, all right, I'm not that old, and some of you guys are way older than me, but you remember those like MS-DOS for dummies and those kind of books? Windows 95 for dummies, you know, like, and it just breaks it down to like the, the easiest thing possible. This is what I feel like is happening in this scripture when he's like, hey, so what's God's will for you? What's God's will for you? He made it so simple. They're like, well, we're just going to do like each verse is just one part of the sentence. First one, rejoice always. Rejoice always. That's our action step. That's our challenge for this week. Yeah. Rejoice always. Whether your life is, is smooth sailing right now, and, and man, I pray for that. I pray for you to be in a good season. I pray for your family to be in a good season. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have to be able to rejoice always. There's a friend of mine, I called him out before, and if anybody, and he's okay with it, but um, if anybody knows Jeff Baines, he's the guy that, that has that joy of the Lord. He's the guy that rejoices always. I got to work with Jeff for a while um, here, and, and I got to watch him day in and day out on the grind. That's when you really start to see people's sides, right? Like, you can, you can do a face for an hour on a Sunday. You can, you can yeah. you know, you can fake it till you make it for an hour. But when you start walking side by side with people and you start getting into relationship with people, you, start, you begin to know and understand and see what they are and who they are. And I watched Jeff. I wanted to be like him. Because whether the day was just terrible, it was just the, the worst thing, whether his family was going, if you know Jeff's story, he had some stuff that, that is just catastrophically devastating. And yet I watched Jeff rejoice always. Good times, bad times. That rejoice looked differently. Sometimes the rejoice had tears. Sometimes it had laughter. But I watched somebody who understood that principle of like, this is what God is asking me to do is to rejoice always. And that's easier said than done, right? Like, I can rejoice in the good seasons, um, but when turkey's burning on Thanksgiving Day, it's like it's really hard to rejoice, <laughs> right? Um, uh, pray continually. What does that look like? Like, um, does that look like, you know, you're driving in your car and your eyes are closed and you're praying? Like, is that the smartest thing to do? <laughs> no, right? Because you probably die. 
Um, but praying continuously is something like we can always find something to pray for. Um, I think like it'll open our hearts more to how God sees the world and when we start to pray for the things that are really, really difficult for us to even think about, right? Um, or that coworker that drives you nuts, like pray for your coworker. Pray for, you know, your, your son or daughter who aren't living like the Lord right now. And like you guys have been, I was, there, I was one of those kids that wasn't living for the Lord. And my mom and dad, they continue to pray for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm here now. So <laughs> I, think, I think the prayer works. So if your kids are going through some rough times, like pray for them. Like pray for your mom and dad that, that have that deep hurt, you know, that, that they caused you. You know, I think it's God will open up your heart to more how he sees people when we start to pray for them. Here's a challenge for you this week. Uh, whether you're cooking dinner or preparing dinner or preparing the house or whatever you're doing um, in, in approaching the holiday, um, if, if I was cooking, um, you, I, I don't know, you wouldn't want to be at my Thanksgiving. Um, unless you like Domino's, <laughs> pizza, then you probably like my cooking. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe when, you're, when you're taking that out, you know, you're taking the turkey out and it's thawing and, you, and like you're doing stuffing or whatever you're doing, right? What if you took that time and you started to pray for those people that you know are, you're at odds with? And you, you started to, to, to do that and to, and to pray and say, you know what, I, I know that, there, that we may have conflict. I know we may argue Democrat, Republican. I know we may argue whatever it is. I know we may argue family drama or whatever it's going to be. And instead of gearing up yep. or loading up your argument on how you're going to win, what if you just started praying for him right now? And just thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray that the peace of God would reign in my heart and that the scripture would dwell in, in my heart richly and that I would be able to minister and, and, and find something in order to love that person because God will change your heart on that. I, that is yeah. absolutely for sure. Last one is give thanks in all circumstances. Like the circumstances that are easy? That, is that when we should give thanks? Yes. Yeah, because... <laughs> No, it, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Like, I don't think, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Like, it doesn't matter what you guys go through this week. It doesn't matter what, what trial or storm you guys are in. Give thanks in that, and you'll see what God does. It's going to be, going to be cool. I like the, the will. When you work with kids and youth, they always ask you, when you say things like, what's God's will for my life? That freaks kids and youth out, like, big time. They're like, what's God's will for my life? Oh, my gosh, what if I miss it, you know? And you're like, it's God's will. And, and people have used that. God told me to tell you. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever been there? God told me to tell you. Uh, and you're like, well, God can speak to me, too. So. Yes. <laughs> people have used that and gone astray, but here's, here's where it's clear when we see it in the scripture. When he says, this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus is to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. I, I don't see this in the scripture, and as the worship team comes forward, we're going we're gonna to have some time to, to think about this before we close. Um, but I think about the, going back to the 10 lepers, um, I think I, the one leper, the Bible doesn't say this, so you're not going to find it in there, but I would imagine that his thankfulness was pretty annoying to Jesus. He was probably like, hey, I can't believe you, I can't believe you healed me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Guys hey, one of these people. and he was just all over him, right? Because when God does something like that in your life, the guy would be a pest, Right? Because he's so full of thanksgiving. He's yeah. so rocked by what God did for him yeah. through his son Jesus. Yeah. He was a leper that was cast out. That nobody wanted anything to do with him. And yet nine of those guys just walked. They just said, ah, oh, we're good. Cool, man. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. And the one guy came back and was so overwhelmed for what God did in his life through his son Jesus that he was so full and I just imagine him being so, so annoyingly grateful. At the risk of adding more drama to your family this week, try and be annoyingly grateful. <laughs> Don't get slapped, you know, like know when to turn it off here, okay? Cause, but instead of if you lean to like negative Nancy or downer Dave syndromes, right? Somebody with me, right? <laughs> I know, sorry, Dave. <laughs> If you lean towards that negative, why don't you just get kind of like annoyingly grateful this week? Ask Jesus to help you with it. We're going to pray, and, and, and I'm going to ask Jesus, and I'm going I'm to say, hey, God, I, I have something that's in the way of me living a grateful life. It's in the way of me being thankful. And God, I want to get rid of that. I'm going to ask you this question. It feels like it's straightforward. It is, and I don't apologize. What is stopping you from living a Thanksgiving or a thanks-filled or a thankful life? What's stopping you? What's getting in the way of you right now?
I want you to think about that. Don't blurt it out. That'd be cre- incredibly embarrassing. What's stopping you? Is it unforgiveness? Is it stress of the holidays? Is it an injury that, that somebody hurt you like we talked about before and you're, you haven't been able to process that or, or figure that out? Is it self-centeredness? Is my pride in the way? Is I'm, I'm just so excited to be myself and, and it's all about me that I'm not able to live a thank-filled life? What is it for you? What is it for me? What is it for Pastor Alex? We all have to lay that down. We all have to surrender and say, hey, we want to live a life full of thanksgiving. And so let's pray and ask God to help us in that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that when we have these issues, when we have these things that, that happen in our life, we can go to your word. We can go to the, the Bible where you told us and you instruct us on these things, on how we should live. And so, God, I ask that you would create in us, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of stress, in the midst of anxiety or depression or family drama or coworker drama or whatever, God, I pray that you would, in our lives as we surrender to you, help us to understand what it's like to rejoice always, to pray continually, and to give thanks to you in all of our circumstances. Because we know that's your will. That's what the word says. And so, God, I pray that whatever is getting in the way of that for me, whatever is getting in the way of that for the people in this room, God, I pray that, that you would, knowing each and every one of us, speak to us and impact us in a, in a way that only you can. And that we would become changed. We would come out of this and, and maybe even to a place where our relatives and our friends and our coworkers are like, man, what happened to you? Mm. That, God, you would be so strong, the peace would reign in our hearts from you. That your word would dwell in us richly. And that we would be people that are called to live a life according and is pleasing to you. And that brings light into the world. That brings your love that you've so graciously given us to all the world. Help us to be those type of people in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to stand if you're able, and we're going to go out um, in, in singing a song, and, and Pastor Alex is going to pray a prayer of blessing over us. I just want to say uh, we understand that there's a lot of hurt that can come along at, at holidays, and if you need somebody to stand with you in that, if you're like, hey, man, that's kind of like poking the bear. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm headed for conflict. Um, we would love to pray for you. You can, we would love to pray for you today. Um, you can reach out, you can call or email or text us and say, hey, can you pray for my family this week? We would love to join you and stand beside you in that um, because we know that there, it's, it's not just all fun and games. It's not always Christmas music arguments, right? It's some really hurtful stuff sometimes. And we would love to join you um, and be a partner with you in that. Um, but Pastor Alex, pray a prayer of blessing over us as we go from this place today. Right. Uh, thank you guys for joining us today. It's been a blessing to, to preach the word of God to you guys. Um, I'm going to pray for you guys. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for our people. Thank you for their hearts and their lives and the different families and tribes that they represent here in this room. Um, I thank you, Jesus, for their places of employment, God, their places of work, their um, whatever they do, Lord, for like throughout their week, God. I pray that you would bless that, um, that you would bless their families. You would um, This Thanksgiving, that we would be reminded of all that you've done for us, Lord, and that we would just be thankful, God, for that. Um, I also thank you, Jesus, that we have such a, a beautiful church family here that we can uh, come to each other and be like, hey, can you pray for me? Because uh, I'm struggling loving this person. Um, I'm struggling with this. I'm hurt, like, really bad. Um, we're not immune to hurts in our lives. Um, so, Father, I thank you, God, for, for these people. I pray that you would truly bless them and their families this holiday season, and it would be full of rest um, and not stress. And I uh, thank you, Father, and we love them. In Jesus' name I pray.